Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Again, thank you so much for being patient with me this week. It has been quite a roller coaster of the week with my fever, which I think we're all very grateful to be coming out of um, not just May, but out of uh, the shit show <laughs> that, that was <laughs> this last Mercury retrograde, as we spoke about before with Emily and Stephanie, before we went into this dark tunnel, but we're coming out of the dark tunnel right now. Um, before we get some started, there is something I would like to address. Um, I understand that there have been name calling going on with myself in particular, calling me a witch, which I've been called a witch many, many, many times. I assure you that I am not. Um, I don't know how to do any type of spellcasting at all. Anything that I know about spellcasting, I've found through my research to present to all of you. And as I've said many times before, doing anything that uh, messes with somebody else's free will is gross. It's disgusting. I would never be involved in anything like that. However, what I feel like is happening is that because especially Stephanie and myself have been presenting a lot of research that contradicts the brainwashing of the church, we're now being, people are bullying us. It's not, it goes beyond bullying. It, it, it's actually gone into uh, absolute abuse and threats at this point. I get death threats all the time from, from Christians. Um, and I just want to say that research Doing research, doing your homework is not witchcraft. It's just not. Every topic that I present on my channel is a topic that I have spent hours and hours and hours researching. And as I've said before, if you go back and look at the library of my videos, my opinion does change. And I've left all those videos up where I had a different opinion because I'm not afraid to change my opinion. When you're presented with more evidence, your opinion has to change sometimes. So just because we're presenting topics like Mithraism, or we're looking at the reality of the fact that Yahshua, the real Christ, wasn't ever crucified, and we're presenting that to you, and we're showing you the evidence to support this. We're showing you that the only deity, deity that requires a blood sacrifice is Lucifer. That does not make us witches. Everybody is entitled to his or her own opinion. And if you, everybody watching this channel right now knows that the talking box, I have to be careful about how I say this, the talking box in our living rooms is lying to you. Everybody watching that knows that by now they know what propaganda is. If you know that that is lying to you, but you still think the church isn't, then you're still just as brainwashed as your neighbor who is continuing to watch CNN. So don't call us names because we're actually doing our homework and you're not. Now, with that being, uh, that being said, I do understand that with the matrix of religion, that's a hard one because it's going to trigger your vulnerability and it's going to trigger your fear of mortality. But the fear of mortality itself is nothing but an illusion. Okay, because you're an eternal being. You can't die. You're an eternal being. But with that being said, if you feel triggered by the research that we've presented, sit within yourself. By you name calling and projecting hatred onto us, you're just creating more karma for yourself. Not for us, but for you. Sit with it. Do your own research. All the information that I present I have access to the same resources that all of you have access to. I don't have any special books or any special website. I just dig and dig and dig and dig and dig. And then I compare other people's uh, commentaries. I look at other people's work on the subject. You have that same ability too. All right. And if something we present to you through our own research and if it's my opinion, I try to always state that this is just my opinion. But if it's factual research and you want to counter that, that's fine. Counter it. Do your own research. Find information to counter it. But don't name call and then run away. Okay? So, anyway. All right. <laughs> this is can why I, I've had to I, disable I, comments. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I add something? Um. So I know a lot of us, uh, 
are attached to some beliefs. And I, I was too. And, you know, when you start digging into this stuff and researching, um, it can be really difficult because this stuff challenges those beliefs. However, there is a quote and there is dispute over uh, who is the originator of this quote, but it goes something like this. <clears throat> Contempt for a subject prior to investigation is the height of ignorance. So if, if you are going to condemn or have contempt for any information that is presented and you're not going to investigate it, you are holding yourself in ignorance. At least look at it. You know, you can disagree with any piece of information or find other information to counter that, like Bryce said, but don't just name call and run away because you're attached to certain beliefs. You know, just look at it. Just take, take the bold step, take the courageous step and just look at it. And, you know, ask God, your higher power, universe source, for the ability to keep an open mind, because it is so important in this information war that we have to just keep an open mind and not attach to certain things and then, you know, live your life out of fear and, you know, division and, you know, everything that we've been going through lately. It's just it's really hard. I understand. I, I went through a struggle for a couple of years wrestling with these certain beliefs, but I was willing enough and open-minded enough to just look at it and just taking that initial step. Um, I've really come out of my ignorant shell and I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. So that's just my two cents. I love and that. I want to add something myself to that too. And um, <clears throat> there's, um, I'll have to post it on my community page. I've been meaning to. There was a live last night from one of my favorite Oracle Tarot readers. Um, her name is Rachel Photon. And she's very, she's not a truther, but she's very, very much understanding of all the topics we talk about. Everything. And her mission, just like Bryce and I, and I mean, if that's your mission too, is to expose and shed light on the constraints in the inner prison of any religious system because it is a programming it's a predictable programming mechanism that was created after the mud floods of tartaria mm -hmm. so <clears throat> with that said she brought up a really good point yesterday on her live that i want to share really quickly um out of like many different truth bombs that she put out there on this video which i will share I think I sent it to you, Bryce, too, if you also want to share. I'm going to put um, it in the description box below. Yeah. Okay. I mean, she spent the whole entire video just about, Charlie even did a reading. It was more or less, it. she needed to share this. Um, first of all, she had a near-death experience where God actually showed her the Bible was manipulated. And that she had came back to assist in shedding the light on that. Kind of like, I didn't have a near-death experience. I figured it out by watching you, Bryce, by watching other people, by investigating for myself, by using my higher self's ability to figure out what truth is because truth resonates at a certain frequency, lies resonate at a very low frequency. So that's one way you can figure out truth from lies. But the best point she made, and I never thought about this, Christians, what do they hold most dear to them more than anything? The I word of God the Bible. That's a form of idolatry. Because you're holding a book on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. That's idolatry. And what does the Bible say not to do? Commit idolatry. Do not take idols. Do not worship idols. It's not a, it's not a Moloch statue. It's not even a Jesus statue. But it's a, still, it's a physical book that nothing can go past the book. The book is, that's it. And that's idolatry. Yeah. And I was, I'm like, girl, you got this. Keep, keep going. Keep going. Like, <laughs> I was like rooting her on. <laughs> it's, and I said that before, like, even a, I, if you need a book to determine your relationship with your creator, 
God isn't confined to a book. It's in your DNA. It's in your DNA. Remember that? Remember that show? It's in my DNA. It's in me. It's in me. <laughs> you have that spark of life. You have that already within you. Um, I just recorded the Magdalene manuscript for the week after next. Um, so I'm trying to get ahead on some of that work. And they, he talked about the light coming out of you. And we talk about that a lot of, I even mentioned this, a lot of people will put in the comment section for those of us on platforms that we have a light coming out of us, or they see a lot of orbs around us. And like, we're, we're starting to like look different, glow differently. I believe that everybody watching right now also is having that phenomenon happen to them too. Mm -hmm. You just are not on camera. So you're not seeing it, yeah. right? We have the evidence on camera, but I guarantee you that for everybody watching right now, your light is shining. There are orbs around you as well. Okay. And that's because your, your, your vibration is moving up. Um, the, and the, the book isn't going to do that for you, right? It's like the Yoga Sutras is one of my favorite books ever because it brings me back down to the true purpose of yoga. But this is just a book. This is not going to do anything unless I actually walk away from the book and do my practice. Yeah. So, yeah, if you are putting your Bible above all else, then you are absolutely worshiping an idol. And I know it upsets people when we tell people that the God of the Bible is Lucifer, but we're sh presenting you this information so that you can, first of all, do your own research. I think I've said that in countless videos, especially at the beginning, like, please do your own research into this. I'm just presenting what I've found. Okay. But if you can find information that counters, that says that Lucifer isn't the God of the Bible, then find it. Because in the Bible itself, it says that Lucifer is the God of the Bible. And common sense, uh, what have we learned about all these little islands that these controllers use? What do they do on those islands? They do, the, they do rituals. They do the same thing that Abraham did, that Moses did, that Solomon did. The same thing that Jesus was, Jesus was used for, Mithra was used for. It's sacrifice. What God demands a blood sacrifice? Common sense. What God demands a blood sacrifice? Lucifer. Lucifer. And again, you, you want proof? Read Revelation 21. Right there, it tells you that the God that comes back after the ascension, after Gaga May God, is the real God. The one that's been here up through up to that point is Lucifer. If that triggers you, good. Good. Because triggering shows you the person who's triggered that you are resonating with some sort of truth to that if you believe what you believe like wholeheartedly believe what you believe you wouldn't be affected by what we're saying we want everyone to be happy healthy well i want nothing but the best for everyone and when i see people manipulated it pisses me off and too many people in my life have been manipulated by this thing called the church So anyway, anyway, all right, let's move some, to some happier topics. So <laughs> Emmy, are we walking into June? When I lived in Los Angeles, they called it June gloom because it was always like kind of gloomy in LA in June. It was kind of like overcast. I know down in Mexico, they talk called gloom, uh, June gloom too. So I'm going to ask you, Emmy, are we walking into June gloom? Or are we walking into a, Ju a June boom? What's happening? <laughs> Well, coming out of May, coming out of master class May, <laughs> I think that June's going to be um, a lot calmer and more harmonious. We have a lot of Venusian interactions with other planets, and most of them are har harmonious. Um, so, yeah. I know where Bryce's mind went with that one. <laughs> Oh, we were talking yesterday. Wait, what, out. what is this an Ace of Cups boom that we're talking about? <laughs> like, apparently so. Everybody get your Ace of Cups. Get your Ace of Cups, girls. <laughs> I'm I'm wondering if there's going to be uh, quite a few um, initial twin flame unions this month. Um, with there's my dance. <laughs> 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 yes yes so do you want me to go through my notes and do my little spiel? yes and i'm actually gonna put okay. you um on full screen while you go through this okay 
second stage is yours, Emmy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> okay. So yesterday, Mercury went direct. And a lot of times when Mercury goes direct, like the first day, um, it's kind of like those really old steam locomotives, how it just took so much for it to get going. And you kind of just feel like you're at a standstill and you're like using all of your might and your oomph trying to get going and you're just not. <laughs> um, so that's, that's for me, that's the energy um, of that very end of Mercury retrograde. So I'm, I'm looking forward to um, a more smooth flowing month this month. And, and also, you know, I know Mercury retrograde, ret retrograde gets a lot of a bad rap because we, our lives on this planet are not aligned with nature. Like we still have to go to work every day. We still have to run errands. We still have to get groceries and do laundry. And we still have to do all of this busyness of life because where we live on a slave planet and, you know, we're paid, we're paid slaves. If we were able to work with nature and take the time for three weeks to slow down, take time off, rethink things, you know, regroup. If we were able to do that, Mercury retrograde wouldn't be so bad. But it's just the crazy busy lives that we have. And this, it's like a monkey wrench thrown into it. And especially last month with the incredibly intense energies of the eclipses, um, it was definitely a masterclass. And we had a lot of supporting energy from the aspects that were made from other planets last month, but it was still difficult, still difficult. I had some old issues come up and I wrestled with them pretty much the entire time. And even though I knew what was going on, it's still difficult. It's still difficult to look at your shadow and see the darkness within yourself, not attach to it or judge it or run away from it, but look at it, embrace it, write about it, talk about it, discuss these things and know that you're growing and moving forward. Um, so that's just my little spiel about. Can we pause Mercury on that for a second? Cause you brought up such a good point. And I want to just pause on this. You talked about the idea of like working with nature and how we're on a slave planet. So we don't have that time allotted to us to actually vibe with, uh, with the stars, with these messenger planets. And um, a long time ago, I brought this up a couple episodes, but maybe like two years ago, a year ago, I did a deep dive into the Skinwalker Ranch. And so of course I had to do a lot of studying into the Navajo because that's where the Skinwalker, legends of the Skinwalker come from. And I thought what was so fascinating when I started studying the medicine man of the Navajo people was that they have this simple rule. You know, when people are learning the elements are learning how to be medicine healers. They have a choice to make. They can either go in the path of darkness or light. Now they in the Navajo said that witchcraft, black magic was when somebody worked against nature for their own self-service. Light working healers worked with nature to help you process everything. And so what Emmy just said was so important because the whole we know that this whole what the time that we're in right now isn't about politics it's not about individual countries it's not about medicine education it's a spiritual war we're at a big timeline shift so they have set it up we know the controllers practice black magic they have set it up where we don't have the ability to work with nature for our own healing and you're totally right, Emmy. People get so stressed out about Mercury retrograde. Um, and I'm sure it's more, it's probably more a static key for us in a lot of ways because we have so much technology now too that also, you know, my I t was texting with you the other day, we were talking about this and I like almost cried because my uh, editing software like froze. And I knew it was Mercury, but I like almost cried because I was like in my head, I was catastrophe thinking, but then it, it, a couple hours it released itself. But, but so we have all this other stuff happening too, but how powerful is that with Mercury retrograde? It's a time to settle in and to see what your, what your creator, what your essence is presenting to you to continue to work for your highest good. 
And that's mm-hmm. working with nature. That's working with the planet Mercury. That's working with, um, as, as we know, and yes, for the Christians out there, astrology is not bad. God created the planets and the stars. If God created, if you believe that source creator made the planets and the stars, then why is it bad to, to work with them? They're messengers. It's what angels are too. Angels are messengers. They're messengers. And for those who still believe the propaganda that the church has fed you about astrology, I'm going to tell you right now just to research the Hess Act from World War II, the Hess Act. Hitler made an agreement with the Pope at the time to start the propaganda campaign that astrology was bad because they didn't want you, you, knowing how to read this. They wanted to dumb us down so that they held the upper hand because both sides are using the same tools for different reasons. Again, back to the Navajos, black magic, they use, they try to manipulate nature, work against it for their own selfish desires white light working they use that same nature and they work with it they flow with what god has ordained they help you good a good healer i mean emmy you're a reiki healer a good healer doesn't and and uh, stephanie when you read cards for people you're not telling people oh just avoid it and you'll be Mm -hmm. fine right you're helping Mm -hmm. people process (laughs) what's already tough on people when they come to me for a reading Right. Well, tough. If they give me excuse after excuse, I actually call them out on it. I'll say, you need to stop making excuses because that's where your downfall is. You need to sit in that. Yeah. You need to address it. You need to learn from it. And then once you learn from it, time to let it go, release Transmute it, and move on. Well, that's what you do with, with Reiki. It's a transmuting of energy. It's not just going around it and ignoring it, hoping it'll go away. It's a transmuting of it because energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only be changed. So anyway, I just wanted to pause on that because what you said, Emmy, was so important. And I hope people can start to recognize that. So, all right, back to you, Emmy. Okay. Um, So today, actually, um, Saturn turns retrograde in Aquarius. And um, so that's, that's kind of significant because you've got Mercury coming out of retrograde and going direct and you've got Saturn um, going retrograde. So it's like these planets were, um, were almost coming together. Like they were almost like a, not coming together, but they were almost at a square and they're like, oh, oh, no, we're going to go this way. Um, so it's like, it's like you think something's going to happen or something, something's going to change. And then, oh, no, Sorry. <laughs> just kidding <laughs> um so okay let's see um so around the 10th or 11th um venus is conjunct uranus in taurus and this can um uh this can bring up a lot of venusian changes and a lot of times you know we think um we relate Venus to like feminine sexuality and love and, and that kind of stuff. But other Venusian um, themes are like style and um, your relationships, your um, aesthetic, like what you like to wear, um, how you decorate your house, um, you know, that those kinds of things. And when you have um, it conjunct with Uranus, which is the planet of like, change and shaking things up um you know there can be some you know fun things like maybe people want to change their hairstyle or you know get a couple of new outfits or something like there's just kind of like this this playful upheaval um with this uh interaction here and then um and then right after that a couple days after that mercury enters gemini which is its home sign so things are going to feel a lot more productive. Like you're going to get things done. It's going to feel like a, a more of a flow. There's more of a fluid movement when um, Mercury is in his home sign. And then right after that, um, we've got a full moon in Sagittarius and it's, it's squaring Neptune and Neptune is very dreamy, spiritual, imaginative, otherworldly, fantasy, romantic. So you've got a full moon with Neptune, which is more of this love, sex, romance, harmony um, type of energy. 
And then on the 18th, Venus and Taurus, which, and Venus and Taurus, she's at home there. So she's very um, harmonized and, and accentuated right now. Um, this is, this is the part of the month where things might get shaken up a little bit because Venus and Taurus is squaring Saturn in Aquarius and Saturn is retrograde. Remember it goes retrograde today. Um, so this is going to kind of like shed light on the Venusian shadows, like, um, the shadows of your, your love, your relationship, um, the hard lessons. So the, it's like a maturing of your integrity with the Venusian, um, themes. So that week from like from the 18th for that whole week, um, there might just be a bit of stuff to look at in your relationships. Um, and then on the 19th, um, Venus sex, sextiles Neptune in Pisces. And again, Neptune is very dreamy, imaginative, romantic. Um, and this can kind of be a bit of um, like hitting a wall, especially with the square with Saturn. Um, but Neptune is really supportive of that. So you have this supportive harmony with Neptune while Venus is um, in that relationship, the square relationship with Saturn. Um, then on the 21st of June, uh, Venus makes a, a trine to Pluto in Capricorn. Um, and this is, this is a, I believe this is going to lead to like some positive change. However, there might be a little bit of drama with your Venusian themes. Um, it's just kind of unearthing things like basically just what I've been talking about this long, just or thus far, just kind of unearthing things in your relationship, bringing things to your attention that might need work on, um, that kind of stuff. And if you're in a twin flame relationship, just pay particular attention to this week because if there are things in your relationship that haven't been looked at yet, this might shine a big flashlight on it. I know for me and my husband, Mercury retrogrades were always that kind of a point in our relationship. It would bring things up. But this particular um, alignment with Venus and these other planets could definitely bring some, some things to, a, to your attention. <clears throat> Um, but, but as you work through it and don't run away from it and don't be afraid of it, after you get through it, your relationship is going to be so much stronger and it's very, very empowering. So, so don't be afraid of any of the stuff that's coming up, you know, just look at it, deal with it, find a healthy way to move through. And, you know, hopefully you and your partner are on the same page as far as growth. Um, if you're not though, do it for yourself. You make the changes in yourself your partner will eventually follow. And then Venus enters Gemini on the 22nd and Venus and, Mer and Mercury will be kind of playing with each other. And this is like a very fun time, um, creative. It's very charming energy, maybe a little flirtatious. I was so about to say it sounds like a fun time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so this is this is about about the end of of that week or getting towards the end of that week. So we kind of finish off the um, Venus shadow stuff with a playful Mercury, and it, it's in Gemini, which is Mercury's home. It's it's where Mercury functions best. And then <clears throat> I'm just going to say one thing um, about Mars. Mars is in Aries, which is uh, Mars is at home in Aries. And it's making a sextile to Saturn and Aquarius. And this is going to be a very productive, but it's like a disciplined type of productive. Um, like nose to the grind. You're very motivated. It's like, get her done. And this is the 27th. And then, then we have a new moon. Okay. And we have the sun in cancer and the new moon is also in cancer and it's squaring Jupiter and Aries on the 28th. And this is a very powerful, emotionally driven energy. It's like nostalgic, tender, sweet, loving, 
but on steroids. So people can, I don't know. I imagine if, if twin flames come together, like around the 18th and they go through that week, I imagine that this sun and cancer and new moon and cancer is just going to be like over the top. Like let's go get a hotel room and just spend the whole weekend. Like just all the way in love, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Right. (laughs) Um, And then to end the month, we um, have Venus and Gemini sextiling Jupiter and us and in Aries, which is a very favorable configuration. It's a nice interaction during this new moon phase. And that's my, that's my spiel. I, th- I think it's going to be exciting and exhilarating there. Yeah. I think it's going to be <laughs> a, a much better month than last month. Not, yeah, not that last month was a bad month. It's just difficult looking at our shadows and what we overcame, what we purged, what we detoxed last month, um, I think is going to bring a lot of harmony in our relationships, not only with our partners, but with other people as well. I want to bring something up too, because a lot of people, we talk about twin flames and this romanticizing of it, and that's not the reality of it, right? Um, it's, it's interesting, the energies of May. It seems like it was an extremely necessary energy or energies, plural, to go through because it was like for those who are about to come into union, it's almost like that final preparation and um, kind of clearing up any kind of energy that really truly needs to be looked at, like um, of the shadow self, right, to prepare us for that union going forward into this uh more romantic type of month so i find that the timing is interesting i don't know if it's just me but that's something i just thought of well the, if anybody who knows the tarot the lover's card is actually what astrological sign gemini yes. it's gemini I'm, I'm a tarot reader and I, I need to work on my astrology well gemini is the twins right that's the 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 people who are Gemini's, they always laugh. I actually get along with Gemini's really well. They're very similar to Aquarians. Actually, I think all air signs have a lot of similar similar uh, traits. Mm-hmm. The Gemini's are the twins. So people who are Gemini typically have like two personalities. And if they don't get a handle of those two personalities, it can be Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. But if they know how to integrate, but that's typical for Gemini's or twins. Now, what once again, what are twin flames? For some crazy psychotic reason... I know because we're all three twins, <laughs> um, not with each other, with, uh, with, with, uh, with other, um, a masculine. Um, we decided it was going to be a really good idea to split our soul. What the hell was I thinking? That was pretty psychotic, can I, right? <laughs> can, I, can I say something about that? Yeah. So, um, I, I thought that too, but I was presented with um, another look at it or another perspective. And <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have heard of this person, but his channel is called um, New World All Star, and he is a twin flame coach. Mm-hmm. I think he's actually the the world's leading twin flame coach. Like he's got over five thousand students. I sent you that video from his channel, Stephanie. That's the guy. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. So he he gave this excellent explanation and even drew a diagram. And I encourage you guys to go to his channel and, um, and look this, this video up, but the drawing had, um, a picture of a big circle, which is like your over soul. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then lines going to little circles, which is like a past incarnation, a future incarnation, and then two lines and two circles for this current space-time reality. So it's not necessarily a split of your soul. It's just two simultaneous incarnations. Because if you think of everything with zero point, everything is now a hundred years ago, you had an incarnation a hundred years from now, you'll have an incarnation. And right now you have two simultaneous incarnations of yeah. your soul in the same space time. Reality. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, so it is coming from the same soul, soul essence is, which is 
I get most of my information from Plato Symposium. I know I've said that before. I studied Plato Symposium a real long time ago, just for shits and giggles. I mean, what I do on YouTube, I was doing anyway <laughs> in my life because I'm kind of a nerd. But, um, but, um, so, uh, <laughs> I'm the only one who's not a mom on this channel. So, <laughs> so, um, but you're an aunt. Do what? You're an aunt. I am. I'm an aunt. Uh, Just sit down here. Actually, no, I take the back. You're a dog mom. I am a dog mom. And I'm Ravi dog. can be quite a toddler. He can be. He can get into some stuff. Um, and he's very mouthy sometimes. Oh, it's very mouthy. He's very mouthy. So <laughs> he's a diva. He's the Maharaja of Midtown. <laughs> but um, he likes to make gross noises when you film with Catherine. Yes. He's, he, my dog has a huge crush on Catherine Edwards and she cannot be in the room when I film with her because every time his bed is like right beside my desk. Every time we go to record the minute I hit record, he starts to clean his wiener. It's <laughs> you hear it. I find that so funny out of all people. He does that. It's always Catherine. It's always Catherine. <laughs> So uh, he oh has to not be in the room when I film with Catherine Edwards um, <laughs> because he can't he can't keep his his uh, wiener. He's just a typical boy. Also, <laughs> so, so. see, this is why if you have an animal and you don't have any children that are human, there's you're still a mom. You're just dealing with something with fur. That will, yeah. Never, that, yeah, that will always need you. Yeah. <laughs> They'll always need you. They're, they're perpetually four years old. My but, dogs are more of children than my actual child is. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. He's a funny boy. But yeah, so I, I, years ago, I started studying Twin Flames. I didn't even know, really know I knew I was one. But I just thought it was interesting because I'm such a, um, a nerd for philosophy. I, I obviously, duh. I mean, that's my life outside of YouTube is teaching basically philosophy. Um, and, and so I would study this stuff just for shits and giggles, you know, like when I first read the Upanishads and the, the Vedas text, it was just for shits and giggles. It wasn't, I ended up having to read them again for my work, but I just got wanted to learn. And so what, but the important part of the twin flame and what I want people to understand is that and in all seriousness, I mean, I call it psychotic, but in all seriousness, your soul decided to do this, whether it's the same soul or an incarnation of this, of you and a simultaneously in two people, you did this. We're all doing this. Everything we're doing is a chance to learn and grow is a chance to, to discuss. Um, Alan Watts talks a lot about this in his books. Alan Watts is, was an incredible, he's no longer with us, but he brought a lot of Eastern philosophy to the West. And he talks about how as a spiritual Parusha, as this Parusha, this Atman that you are beyond the Prakriti, the nature, it's like the eyeball trying to see itself. The eyeball can't see itself, right? It can see itself in a reflection, but it can't actually see itself. And so we're constantly on this journey of learning more and more and more about the depths of who we are as an eternal being. And so for some reason, you and your vast understanding of eternity decided to have this twin flame experience. Yeah. And so what that means, from what I understand, I don't know how, well, I guess I could just say it. Apparently sex with your twin is like nothing else. Like it's, it's, there's things that happen intimately with them that won't happen with anybody else. From what I understand. I can, I can mm -hmm. confirm. It, it is, no, I mean, it is otherworldly. Yeah. And that's what a lot of the Magdalene manuscript and a lot of these books that talk about this speak about that. Like there are just some activations spiritually that are only going to happen with your twin, which is kind of gross. Cause it's almost like you're having sex with yourself, but not. Yeah. It kind of really. <laughs> gives new, uh, a new twist to the term. Go F yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that. I'm like, so if I'm intimate, Oh my, my God. Twin, that's so funny. Even though my twin <laughs> is not me, in my body, we're two separate entities experiencing life as autonomous, sovereign beings. But it's like you're, a, you're, you're <laughs> I've always wondered what it was like to have a penis. I guess I could just tap into that. <laughs> what that feels like to have something dangling between your legs. I'm still laughing at the whole go fuck yourself thing. That, that, that's epic right there. That just made my day. I'm going to say that to myself for now on. Go fuck yourself. Like, come on. Let's. <laughs> I mean, imagine the first night you're with your twin. You're like, you ready to ready to go fuck ourselves? Like, 
<laughs> Hope you like my body. It's yours too. <laughs> How Fat and all, skinny How and all, and this? whatever you look like. <laughs> Hope you so, if you got a twin have, flame but... and you haven't come in union yet, you better start yeah. working out. I know, I know, right? Like, I'm be like, I hope you don't mind my tattoos. I probably should have asked you first if you consented to this because I'm doing this to our bo to our body. <laughs> no, I'm it's just kind of a mind fuck when you really start to think about it. But but the thing about it is too, because you are essentially coming from the same and the oversoul. The oversoul is spoken a lot about in this as well. The Magdalene manuscript, the higher self, the oversoul. Um, no one's gonna trigger you like your twin is gonna trigger you. Like you, we got soulmates and karmics that are supposed to trigger us too, but your twin is going to shine lights on because no one pisses you off. Like you piss yourself off. Right. And yeah. now you are in another body speaking to you, you know, talk like, about shadow work, talk about some shadow work. And so we understand that a lot of like these solar flashes that are coming is the vibrational frequency of the twins actually, you know, doing the hokey pokey save the world. Um, but if, if you aren't actually working on yourself during this time of separation, which is necessary for twins, there's always a time of separation before it's not going to be as beneficial as it, as it can be. So that's in your power though. That's totally in your power. And you do have the, even if you are a twin, you do have the right to reject your other twin. You do have that right to like, that free will to walk away and some yeah. twins it's rare from what i understand i think like 99 percent of of twin flames are in soul contract to eventually be in a romantic union but there are some twins who are not soul contracted to be in a romantic union they just work together they'll just do stuff together um that's rare though that's very very rare um so but again, don't think about it too much as being the same thing because it will start to mess with your mind <laughs> that you're literally <laughs> experiencing life elsewhere. You know, and you start thinking, I wonder how many languages I actually speak then. <laughs> if that person might speak multiple languages. Um, so, so yeah, there's going to be, uh, and that's, and that's, again, it's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's a hard thing. And it's just something that you and your infinite wisdom from your higher self decided to do so that you could grow more and learn more within yourself, within your experience in this uh, stimulated, simulated reality, right? That we're in. Um, that's, I was just talking about this this morning when I was recording, it's like the, this idea of opposing forces. Once again, you're an, you're an eternal being living in a, a mortal body. Well, so is your twin. And so it's going to cause a whole slew of uh, master classes, as you say, Emmy. <laughs> 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 to come up out of the woodwork. But with that being said, Stephanie, do you want to pull the, the cards and see what's going to happen? Can we, let's, okay, so should we ask, I'll let you go first, Emmy. Do you want to ask any specific questions about the month of June of the, of the tarot cards? Well, I before do. she starts, sorry, I just go need ahead. to point this out real quick. I was about to start shuffling and I had two cards come out and it looks like we do have some magical unions. Tonight, tonight, mm. cue all the new friends. You said when you were talking about that hotel room, I was thinking about vibrating beds. You put the quarters, <laughs> <laughs> roses everywhere, rose petals everywhere. Like, <laughs> I don't think you'll have time for that. I don't know. I've been reading a lot about the um, the caressing, the exploring of each other's bodies, which is your body too. So you're like, let me look at this. Let me look at this. Um, <laughs> that sounds kind of fun. It gives a new meaning to this song. Every time I think of you, I judge myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm judging myself. Judging myself. <laughs> Can I talk to you? <laughs> it's so gnarly. Like that really screws in my head sometimes when I think about that. I'm like, Maybe that's what the song really truly means. Maybe, Maybe it's not about I mean, masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I'm, I, I, if I think about that, too, which I, I am, I'm Bata, so I am an overthinker, but I'm like, I'm literally living two different lives right now. This is psychotic. Like, I'm like, this is psychotic. Like, <laughs> I have enough trouble with my own life. Like, 
what the hell's happening there? Like, I don't even know, you know? So anyway, all right, Emmy, go ahead. Girl. Oh, as, as my, my deck, look, what look, what's right there. Nice. Oh, thank nice. You. <laughs> okay. So I was looking at some charts and there is, and I couldn't, I could not find this video. Um, but there is some new technology with the, um, the way that they monitor the sun mm -hmm. and on the, on the 25th or the 26th of May in the, in this one particular, um, model that they have, it looked like the sun had a micronova, like it burst like it from that. the whole thing. Okay. And right now for the last like four days from the first, second, third, and today, we have been above the space weather alert threshold with electrons. Like there is a bombardment of electron flux right now. It's getting and hot it's, and steamy. Or yeah. So my question is, did that supposed micronova or, or is it sending us all of this cosmic stuff and activating twin flames? Like, 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 like make, like turning on the magnets for them to attract each other into their, into their presence. Oh boy. Okay. So I, I'll, 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 keep pulling, I'll tell you guys. So I, I constantly, even when I'm just chit chatting with friends, I mean, Stephanie can attest to this, even if we're just on zoom, like chit chatting, I'm constantly throwing cards, aren't I? Like I'm constantly shuffling and yeah. then Maggie or Magdalene will often like pull a card out. What you wish for that just flat fell out. And as you were saying that, Emmy, about the electrons, which are energy, that's what electrons are, their energy being thrown out into the world, the uh, four of wands popped out, which this is a celebration card. Wands are fire. But this is also one of the many, or there's a, not many, but there's a few cards in the tarot deck that also rep can represent twin flame union. As you see in that, this is the traditional Raider White. They're, they're in marriage, right? They're in union. So, and you see the, the, the two pillars are mirroring each other. So, so this is actually the, the star card is Aquarian. Also, I'm an Aquarius. And then the, that's a, a fire sign as well. So Aries, Sagittarius, or Leo. Um, so you can also read that too, coming from astrological signs. But I just thought that was interesting. <laughs> and that just threw out. So that's going to be my question after this. <laughs> is, is it going to cause the tower moment? <laughs> <laughs> Cause, cause love, it's all about that love, right? Yep. I'm just clarifying a couple cards here. Okay. So here's, what's interesting. There's a lot of darker energies that have been trying to keep twin flames apart which we talk about quite often. Um, and so the seven of swords is representing that currently this isn't happening for all twin flames. This is happening for certain ones just during this uh, particular battle um, that we're in. Um, so it's like they've been trying to separate or steal essences from right. Um, certain twin flames so they do not come into union because that is the uplifting of the planet and here we have some disappointing times for uh what's about to occur with those people um because this is this is disappointment and it changes the energy going forward so they're going to be disappointed with that energy that they're using to create separation because it's now coming to a new um now we're on a different path. We're going to a trajectory that is for the highest good of the twin flames. We're talking about the sun. This is a yes. Um, in the tarot, it's kind of like an ace in the major arcana. If you can see, this is all astrology right here. So it's like everything is aligned. This also can represent something to do with the solar flash because this is solar, the, um, you know, uh, that spark that's created during a union. Um, in addition, we have um, the, the, I don't want to say hierarchy, but the part of the twin flame 
union that actually starts to become the magnet to attract the other one is the spiritual leader, which is, I had to clarify the higher font. It is that empress. So it's usually the female that attracts the male in that. I don't want to say the word manifests it in, but draws in the male because that's just part of the journey. Usually um, I had, um, let's see, we are looking toward the near future with that. Dates are not going to be known. I have the moon card. So this is, this is more of an underlying thing that's occurring. I'm actually feel like what I feel like this is doing is it's pulling the twin flames in spiritually first to allow the physical to then occur because everything has to happen in the ethers first in order for it to happen in this, in the physical form. But I think we've been on that journey where it's been occurring, but again, there is a lot of um, dark forces trying to combat this because they're fighting for their life at this point in time. So it's interesting that I'm getting that in this particular spread, but yeah. Yeah. And it, and it looks like a lot of work has been done that it's going to, the nine of pentacles. What's nice about the nine of pentacles is it's a super grounded card. Um, this is a very peaceful card. This is abundance. So <clears throat> looking into the near future with these unions, it looks like there's a lot of work that was done, um, you know, with these different unions to come together, to be more abundant, to be more grounded. Um, cause grounding is important, right? So that's what I'm getting. Can I ask a follow-up question that a lot of other, um, so there are other readers on YouTube that Stephanie and I both watch a lot. They're not, they're following these stories. It's wild. It's wild. It's all the same thing. It's It's like flames. It's like, they talk about black magic being used. Um, Are there, and we know that 90% of the truthers are infiltrators. Mm -hmm. They're being, uh, JCK does an awesome video explaining how this works. Um, Mm -hmm. They, you know, the controllers are many things. Stupid ain't one of them. If they've Mm -hmm. infiltrated our media, they're also going to infiltrate the alternative media. Some of these truthers are highly infiltrated, meaning that they participate in blood rituals, meaning they are 100% a part of these are the covens. And then some of them are just paid off by the cabal. They do put some true information out there, but they they put it out there to sweep people in and then turn the ship the other direction. So one thing that one of the readers that I've been following that we've been following She has talked a lot. Now she refers to these covens as karmics, which you have three different types of people in your life. You have a karmic, you have a soulmate, and then you have a twin flame. Karmics are really neither good nor bad. They're just people that come up in your life just to like shake things up. That crazy ex that you have was probably a karmic you know, to like make things a little rattly and frictiony for you to evolve. Well, this reader calls these covens karmics but to a massive extent. And she has been picking up. And again, she's not a part of our our community here on YouTube. That's truthers, right? But she has been picking up that these karmics are abusing divination to trick people into falling for the separation of the twins. Can I ask the cards if this is correct? Are there infiltrators on YouTube that that are... um, dressed up and presented as a truther, but they're using divination or they're abusing it to manipulate people and to also spell cast other parts of the unions. Do you know what I'm saying? That makes sense. Um, That doesn't, and if I do get a yes, that doesn't mean every single truther using divination is manipulated. No, no. we have a lot (laughs) of people using divination tools. Mm -hmm. Um, But this kind of goes hand in hand with what I was saying about past lives. So if if, uh, there's a reader on YouTube that is telling you what your past life was, they're reading the cards and telling you what it was. Red flag, huge red flag. What does Mr. T say? Huge, huge red flag there. Okay. No past life reader should be. I've done past life readings before with many people, one being Shanti here on YouTube, Aquarius Rising Africa. She, when she did my past life reading, she didn't tell me what to think. She didn't tell me anything about the storyline. She just asked me where I was, asked me to describe what was around me, asked me what I was feeling, asked if I could describe. So it was all coming from me. It wasn't coming from her. She didn't, she didn't interject any opinion whatsoever. 
So that's a proper past life reading. When someone does not interject, they allow you to lead the way. Okay. So again, I'm going to remind you, if there is somebody on YouTube that is pulling cards and telling you what your past life was, red flag, huge red flag. Okay. I want to add to that real quick too, because I've had questions about past life readings in my personal readings. So I don't want people to get confused. So when I read off the cards, if they ask, what I do is I kind of just go based off of like, um, I'm trying to channel like, okay, I'm kind of saying, I don't, I don't make a storyline. I say, well, it, you could have been a male or a female and I'm seeing that this was a harsh lifetime, maybe a karmic lifetime or an easier life. Like, if, and I'll, what I, my wording on it is, but if it doesn't resonate, don't hold on to it. Yeah. No, I'm talking about these people are giving specific. Yeah. Detailed I, stories. Yeah. I'm very careful with that kind of stuff because honestly, like, yeah, we don't want to attach ourselves to things like that. Like got to be very careful about what exactly we're emotionally attaching ourselves yeah. to. Right. Yeah. So yeah. just be mindful of that. So yeah. If, um, if I were to ask Stephanie, Hey, Stephanie, was I an Egyptian in a past life? She could pull the cards and say, yeah, you were, or was I, you know, European and yeah, you were the, but you're the one dictating those questions. Right. You're the one that's guiding that. Yeah. So, all right. Okay. So I have two different, I, I separated my cards a little bit here. <clears throat> I have a current situation and then I have the near future situation going on here. So essentially what has occurred is there's been a, a blockage of the masculine counterpart with using the magic. Okay. And it was like to draw away, remove separate this is movement this is travel so there are a few people um counterparts that could be traveling and it, it's i'm getting distraction i heard distraction so it's like a distraction from what their mission actually is they're pulling them away from the mission and also to this is like hypnotizing this is sleep deprivation so this is like mk ultra this card essentially means to sleep to rest or have boredom i'm getting from this though that there is um i'm hearing uh just uh sleep deprivation um <clears throat> and hypnotism or zombified you know like those kind of things spell casting essentially right and one good way to spell cast somebody easily is to deprive them of sleep not allowing them to sleep so um that could that could be the case um this could also just be regular old spell casting that is creating this zombified effect um kind of messing with their mind a little bit but as we move forward into the near future with that card we do have a change happening i do really feel like the energies are allowing that shift to occur especially with the last spread that i got with the sun heading into all those other cards that I get, it looks like there is a major shift occurring. And this is a ma major arcana. So if this is a major arcana, this is a huge change, a huge change. So yeah, that's, that's, um, <clears throat> that's actually good news. That's good news. So, and I also, I also uh, want to ask, so yeah, so obviously there are, infiltrators on YouTube who are part of these covens that are abusing divination to spell cast and keep the masculine in bondage, which is what we kind of figure because a lot of masculines are in bondage and a lot of the females are not like a lot of the females seem to know exactly what's going on. Um, now, with that being said, with that being said, what can I ask are a lot of these infiltrators that are covenant members that are doing the devil's work basically through abusing divination and through spell casting the masculines are they now will the cards let us know are they now the masculines handlers question just some some and then i have cards. a question about the astrology portion of what emmy said afterwards just some just some uh just some things to look out for some uh you know Connecting of dots to <laughs> who? I, I mean, did you ever think we'd be sitting in a situation like this ever? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, like, it's what so did I get myself into. 
when I was in high school, now granted, I went to a prep school, so we were required to take calculus in, in my senior year of high school. And I hate math so much. Like I hate math. That's not my wheelhouse. But I'm like, the other day I was thinking, I was like, that calculus has not come in handy. Black magic has been way more of a problem than somebody told me it was going to ever be. And I am not prepared. <laughs> so why were we taking calculus again? Why didn't someone teach a course on like this stuff? Because at 39 years old, I'm having to like learn all this craziness that I thought was literally just a sight. It feels like Stephen King novels are real. Like it feels like we're in the middle of a damn Stephen King novel right now. And part of me wants to laugh and part of me wants to cry, you know, but that's I'm so happy. I use this deck. I'm so oh. happy I use that. <laughs> it's telling storylines. Like I'm not just getting yes or no answers. Like I'm getting a full, the full shebang. Okay. So again, <clears throat> this is the question about the handler. Are these? Yeah. So Yeah. I'm getting an absolute yes, and I'm going to explain why. Because number one, um, handlers are very notorious for love bombing uh, initially. And so with this page of cups, this is like um, love bombing, essentially. This is a communication of love, love, love. Like, oh, you're important. Oh, you're going to be something big one day. Oh, I can make you a lot of money. Offers, offers and offers and love bombing, just constantly building up the ego, building up the ego, building up the ego, which I have the devil card here working off of the ego. But again, the devil card is telling me all in all, these are handlers because they're of demonic um, forms um, and they're not for the highest good of these people. And, and there's like a complete brainwashing happening. And there is a lot of manipulation. Um, again, there's a lot of MK ultra going on sleep deprivation, um, spell casting, um, other, other weird stuff happening. I, I never knew black magic was so potent until this occurrence. So, and Bryce, I know you can say the same thing. And Emmy, I think you're just finding out. <laughs> I mean, you're with yours. But anyways, I won't get into that whole thing. But anyways, we have that. So what it's happening is there is an isolation that is occurring to make the, these people think that that's the only family they have. It's like a cult. It's what cults do. Yeah. Yeah. So this is poorly aspected. Ten of Cups is like one of the most amazing cards of the whole tarot deck in terms of the ma minor arcana. But this is so poorly aspected. And then it's next to the high priestess. This is a cult. This is a cult. However, keep getting in the near future because that's what this card means in the near future. That's going to come to an end. Yeah. So they've isolated. That's why I feel like the, the, a lot of the males are in bondage. They've been isolated. And a lot of these channels where these truthers have handlers now, you can look and see their channels have changed. It's just the handlers on the channel now. That's it. Maybe a couple of handlers are controlling there. different stuff. And, and so can I ask, before we ask this, probably can I ask one more question regarding the handlers? Are they also, because I know money's been stolen from me. I calculated how much money has been, uh, Stephanie knows, I'm not going to say it's a lot, right? That's been skimmed off of my AdSense that, um, I have some proof because of who's doing it because um, my old password that only one other person on this platform had because we used to simulcast. Um, and then when the infiltrators, the coven members came in and started doing their black magic, I actually changed my password. Thank God. But they've been using it to try to hack into my channel. I get emails all the time. It's coming from Canada. I know exactly who's doing it. It's the old password that only one and that other person that had it, I know would never do this. It's the things touching me on my head. <laughs> this is really weird. Yeah, sorry. Something's uh -huh. touching me on my head. Well, I wanted to ask about the money because I think that the money that's been stolen from me is being stolen from this by this coven um, because it's they've been using the same. It looks like through my AdSense they use the same password to hack into my account, and now every time I post a video, I lose two hundred dollars. So, um, yeah. So I want to know if the money is also being if money is also being stolen from we already read on this one on no not yeah not from me yeah we we did we did on a past show from the for the masculines oh for the masculine yeah. oh, no i know oh, I, 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 know that. About it, so. <laughs> I know i know and i have full faith that it's going to be uh okay uh, so uh, vindicated these handlers stealing money from the masculine time i already know the answer to that because i actually have proof but Let's find and out. Another here. reader picked up on this too and said that these covens are creating like fake bank accounts. 
and showing the masculines, these bank accounts that appear like they have money, but they don't, and they're filtering money in through. So, so a lot of these masculines under spell casting have like given business stuff to this coven, like passwords, all that kind of stuff to this coven regarding their own business. And your YouTube channel is your business. And so they, they're now able to get these numbers and start to stipend money away from it's all done to keep people where they are, keep them separated. Because if you want to travel, I have four major arcanas here. This is really strange. Wow. Cause if you want to travel, what, what do you have to do? You got to pay for travel. You know, if you want to go see your twin, if you figure it out and you want to go run to your twin, but your money's been drained and you have no money. I mean, I feel like that's why they took all of my money too. It's because they tried to ground me. Well, it's going to come back to them. They're, yeah, they're going to get it back. And I got so, this with you too, but we have here. Yeah. So there's some, there's some shady business um, happenings under the surface with the moon card. Um, <coughs> and it, it has a lot to do with like, so I get the world card. Again, it goes back to their own nefarious agendas, trying to change things up in their agenda. They're trying to make worldwide changes to meet their own nefarious needs. Um, it, yeah, and, and then I have the Hierophant card. The Hierophant card, card oftentimes talks about uh, the witch covens and everything um, like that. But as we go forward, though, it looks like there is a good outcome because we are going on the good timeline is what these cards are saying. And actually it's going to come back to them um, quite quickly because that's quick movement. And that's like holding onto the pentacles, bringing the holding in, bringing something in. So something is coming in. That's quick. That would be the money. And yeah, I think everything will be righted. So we just have to, you know, put out those intentions that that will happen. Yeah. So I want to ask about, um, you know, I mean, you brought up a lot of Venus energy, you know, going forward. So my question is, when it comes to, we're going into these calmer waters and everything, I want to know if the Venus and the Neptune energy also have something to do with the, the, the these unions or even high level soulmates coming to union too. It's not, that doesn't have to be just about twin flames, but the, we are at a very important precipice here going forward with those type of unions because of the vibrational frequency. So that's guys, that's why we talk about this a lot, right? I just want to clarify that. So people don't feel like they're left out. If they maybe are not on a twin flame journey, doesn't mean you're any less important. It's just a particular type of journey that some of us crazy souls decided to do. So I, my question is, is the Neptune and the Venus energy have anything to do with these unions as well? And unless you guys want to word that differently. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to pull two as well. And I, I yeah, I like what you like Catherine Edwards says that a lot. Like if you look at a sports team, you know, go sports. I'm not really a sports person, but go sports. Um, that was a Lego movie. My nephew loves the Lego movie. And it was like, go sports. <laughs> so every person on the team has a particular mission, right? So if we look at it that way, we all have a particular mission. So regardless of whether you're twin flame, high soulmate, whatever you, you have a particular, you agreed before you took, we sat around and we agreed to take on the roles that we've taken on in this timeline for a particular purpose. I'm getting some girls, 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 <laughs> girls. Okay. Ooh. So yeah. So we have, um, uh, these, these unions coming to fruition. Okay. And actually it's creating a gateway. I just heard gateway of it coming in really quick. This also could be traveling to one another. Okay. A little bit of sex magic going on. Sorry, I had to add that. Yourself. If I'm going to video <laughs> with you, Bryce, I have to make it kind of. About the hokey pokey. Are. Put yourself around. That's what it's all Rated about. Up. Put your right hand in, you put your right hand out. You put your right hand in, you shake it all about. I don't know when the last time I sang that one. <laughs> that gives it a whole real soon. new meaning. We have a whole new meaning to a few things here. The Hokey Pokey song, apparently. It's Go it's fuck funny. yourself. 
Well, the Hokey Pokey's <laughs> every time I think of you, I touch my sex. song. <laughs> Wasn't the Hokey Pokey always about sex? Like, that's what I was, it was always a, a song about sex. Well, maybe the Hanky Panky. No, yeah, the Hokey Pokey. I think it was okay. always about, yeah. Okay. You put everything in and you take it out, you put it in, so, you take it out. What does that sound like, guys? That's what it's all about. <laughs> Anyways, apparently this is the Hokey Pokey card now, okay? <laughs> so, because it's, this is positively aspected, we could really get funky here. <laughs> this is quickness. I can ride and fire in and out, in and out, in and out of the Hokey Pokey. <laughs> Talk about some friction. We're well, talking about some serious gonna, action over here, guys. We're gonna have to rate this video R. No children can watch this video. We need to be writing romance novels, and I don't even like it. When Bryce, do, Bryce and I do videos together, you never know where it's gonna go. It's kind of like, okay, let's make a bet. Is this gonna go rated R or not? Or is this gonna go like, <laughs> you know, us bitching at a bunch of people or not? We never know where this is going. You know, it's just it's, it's just, all in fun. It's, it's all fun. Laugh. What's yeah. the point of life, right? Well, we do have a three of cups right here. This is celebration through and through. That's again, brutal. we have a lot of feminine energy coming through. So, uh, <coughs> again, it's a lot to do. Divine feminine are coming back. The, vem the feminine counterpart really stirs up pots. It's because her milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> 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 New song list, everybody. <laughs> Go to your Amazon Music. You're never gonna look at these songs again the same way. I feel like Matt, I, feel like, I feel like Magdalene said that to me. Actually, her milk, my milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Maggie, oh my goodness, she got dirty mind. Anyways, so the feminine. Okay, this is important because the feminine is really gonna restore balance in the masculine emotions. There's gonna be a nice amount of masculine balancing like they're gonna they're, they're gonna get back aligned because what we've done is we've, we we the, the powers that be you know um the controllers what they've done is they really distorted the masculine and they distorted their divine feminine aspect and the divine masculine aspect why do you think a lot of men feel feminine and i'm not trying to bash anybody who genuinely feels like that because your previous lifetime or maybe all your previous lifetimes, you were the opposite gender. And guess what? You decided to incarnate as the opposite gender for the first time. That's something I've picked up with, with some people yeah, or vice versa. So we do have a nice, even balance here of uh, masculine energy. And then we do have this card. This is a guys, this is an 11, 11. That's a twin yeah, flame the card. card. Yeah. The four, four ones. Yeah. So I pulled two on that. I only pulled, well, I only needed to pull, uh, five cards. Ace oh. on the bottom, by the way. Sorry. Ace on the bottom. And it's just, without the pentacles? Mm -hmm. it's a, so pentacles are also the slowest cards in the deck. So I think it feels like we've been like, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Like trying to, to get closer. But it's it looks like once it happens, it happens lickety split, you know? But it's been like Apparently, a slow build up. Apparently, chariot. Um, Going to have to surrender to one another. Fine. Fun. All right. So I pulled two because I was asking specifically because we were talking about twin flames. I asked specifically about high level soulmates um, because we know that the twin flames having sex basically is what's going to shift this, shake it all up. That's the solar flashes, right? Is the actual orgasm. I'm serious, guys. Like it literally is. This is why the church doesn't want you to think it's good. They yeah. demonize it. And Magdalene just told me that she did say that joke about the milkshake that I said because her sex life is written about in this book. So she's got to laugh about it too. So anyway, so I asked specifically about high level soulmates because um, we already know that the twin flame union is coming. So for these are for the high level soulmates, which in a lot of ways, high level soulmates, you have a way easier ride than the twin high level. Eh, no pun intended. Easier ride. <laughs> Wow, wow. We're taking that highway to hell right now, according to that church talking about. <laughs> All right. So so for the, the the first card I pulled out was the five of swords, which I thought was very interesting. So I think for a lot of people, as far as the the um five of swords, I mean, look at this guy. He looks really upset. You know, we see the raven there, crows, the birds that are some often used to distort things and spell casting and stuff. Um, we even see the dove used in the Bible. Birds are used a lot in um, distorting mm -hmm. stuff. 
anyway, so he looks upset. He looks stressed out, like weary, like the weary traveler, like, oh my God, no, nothing's going to come right. Like you know, we've all been there, right? We've all been in that situation where we're like, it's never going to work out. This is just awful. But then it quickly, so I think this is where a lot of people have been. If they're looking for their soulmate, their high level soulmate. And then we come to the two of pentacles, which we see this. We've been using the two of pentacles. Sorry, guys. I ordered non uh, cards that don't aren't uh, whatever this is called because the light hits it. But they should holographic. Be, holographic. That's it. They should be coming uh, coming in tomorrow. But you see the two of pentacles, which is usually like a choice. But we've been kind of seeing this as a timeline card, the switching of two timelines. So that came up immediately after. And then the celebration card came up. And then the tower card came up. And so I think that high level soulmates as well, you are a part of this switch too. So I think you're kind of in the same boats as the twins as your high level soulmate is going to be coming in soon. The bottom card was the six of cups, which the six of cups lately, it's like memories, good memories, right? So I'm getting a lot of past life energy in yeah. the six of cups when yeah. I've been pulling it lately. And high level soulmates are also going to have um, a lot of past lives with you as well. And I just pulled the seven of pentacles, which the seven of pentacles working hard again, the seventh planet. Thank you, Nicole, for pointing that out. The seventh planet is Venus. Aphrodite, don't forget me. Romeo and Juliet me like this is um, give me fat boys. What's the line from Th thoroughly modern Millie? Give me fat boys arrow or something. Cupid's arrow like this is the, Z the Venus card, right? That after that Aphrodite energy of love. Yeah. So I think a uh, high level, high level soulmates, you are still a part of this changeover too. Um, mm -hmm. So you're, I'm you glad you did that spread because I don't want to leave people out either because yeah. they're not oh, on a flame journey because that does not lessen the best. Yeah. Like the, that does not lessen the importance of your soul and the importance of your purpose. Absolutely. So you're kind of going to, I mean, there might be a different patterning as to how the twin flames and the soulmates come together, but they each need each other is what I'm thinking. We each need, we need to be in the love boat, basically. We need to just rent out a Ramada Inn and just give everybody a room because <laughs> that's what's yeah. going to occur. You're going to see the building go, whoa, whoa. <laughs> that might be the better, tower. Better put it on some boat hydraulics. Because... <laughs> What is it if, if the if the rooms a uh, uh, rooms a rocking don't come a knocking? What do you do in college? You put a sock on the doorknob or something like that. Like <laughs> so, um, so it's all good, guys, and it's all exciting. I mean, love is fun. Love is ex nothing is more exciting than love, right? And having that connection with another human being. And um, you know, I always laugh that I think I got lost on my way to Venus and ended up on Earth. Um, oops. Because the Venetians seem to, you know, they seem to be doing it all the time. So, <laughs> um, so why didn't we go to that planet? But, uh, but anyway, um, but again, we can bring that Venetian energy here into, and, and with that too, I mean, I, I want to make it clear and just from my own perspective, like I'm not, even though we laugh and we joke around about all this stuff, like for me in all honesty, in my personal life, I do practice what's called brahmacharya. And that is a form of my yoga discipline. And brahmacharya used to mean back in the day when yoga students were like monks, it used to mean celibacy. It does not mean celibacy for us now. It just basically means don't be a slut is basically what it means. And so I'm not someone that sleeps around at all, at all. Um, I'm very monogamous when it comes to relationships. Um, I don't, for me, polyamory doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And part of that is because when you are intimate with somebody, you are literally sharing karma with that person. You become a part of their energy. And if you're a twin flame, you're already in each other's energy field anyway. Um, and so, and so that's something I want people to consider too. Of course you do you boo, like whatever works for you works for you. But I, if you are, know you're coming into union with your twin or your high level soulmate, if you are single right now, or, you know, I would highly suggest like practicing celibacy while you're waiting for that union to start to heal um, your energy fields from whoever you've been with in the past. Does that make sense? Yes. Cause you carry, especially if you're a woman. I mean, not to be graphic, but you have a human being putting themselves inside of you. That's going to affect you energetically. It's if, so it's, if it's a healthy relationship, then it's going to be very positive. But I, I, from what I understand, when you are intimate with somebody, 
over a long term, you do become kind of chemically dependent on that part. There is a chemical reaction that happens. And so I would just highly suggest, again, do what you want to do, but I would really suggest that everybody who is not in union yet, whether that be a twin flame or a high level soulmate, please, please, please consider practicing brahmacharya celibacy for now. Doesn't mean you can't have fun with yourself, but, um, but you know, just with other people, like maybe start to clean yourself up a little bit. Uh, does that make sense? Do y'all have anything you want to say on that? Not to sound like a prude or anything, but no, I agree with that. And, um, <clears throat> also too, if you, that goes along with just bad habits in general, because we want to definitely take care of the vessel we're in, in this lifetime. Um, and, and make sure you are, Especially for these twin flame unions, um, the shadow work, I, I can't stress it enough. Um, you know, I mean, I think you, you and your husband had to go through a little bit of a period where it was kind of frick, there was friction in terms of like needing to do shadow work in the middle of it, correct? Oh, man. And, and that wasn't fun mm. on your end. It wasn't fun on his end. So we can, I mean, we're, we're, we're always a work in progress. I always say that on my channel. We're a work in progress. Your shadow work never ends. However, there, there's that big buildup portion of it. That's like the most uncomfortable portion of it. And that is a very, you know what? Let's just say any kind of union. And I don't care if it's twin flame or, <coughs> or soul level. In order for a healthy relationship, you got to really love yourself. And you really got to get through that thickness and that mud and what do we say? The lotus flower, right? It comes through the mud and it's beautiful. Become the lotus flower before the union. Make sure you love yourself. Make sure you respect yourself. Make sure you have good boundaries. If you don't have good boundaries there, that, that fractures your aura. Yeah. You know, so you want to make sure you're preserving yourself. I hate to say that because we're not like meat or anything. Well, I guess we well, are. And, and I don't want to, I don't want to push, like, I don't believe in purity culture either. Like, I don't believe in the, the church's base. I no, I hear you. A lot of shame. But I'm just talking about from a karma. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming most people watching right now are not virgins. <laughs> I'm assuming most of well, us. Well, yeah, are. this is more just on a karmic level. Just because of any time period, I would say that, like, I mean, they can do whatever they want anyways. But it's more or less, yeah, you have, you just don't want to put any more karma in your life that you really don't need to deal with that's unnecessary yeah i mean you can but then then you have more work to do yeah so it's up to that person yeah <clears throat> i think there's a lot of a lot, of a lot of shame and guilt wrapped up in sex because of what we've been taught with the yeah. church and when people rebel out of that because we, we want to follow our, our true natures. When we, when we rebel and just like Bryce said, become sluts and you share your body with anybody just to fulfill a need. Um, you're, and if you don't know energy and you don't understand um, energetic exchange, you know, you're, you're going around with other people's stuff attached to you. You know, when you share your body, especially in an intimate sexual manner, when you share your body with somebody, there is a huge, huge energetic exchange and there's a huge energetic cord formed. And if you have never cleansed yourself or cleansed your aura of these energetic cords and you, you've had sex with multiple people over the course of your life, you still have these cords attached to them, even if there's no further uh, engagement or inter interaction at all, you're still attached to these people and what's going on in their life can affect you through the cord that you have between the two of you. So it's really important that if you are engaging in sexual activity, which nothing wrong with that, make sure that a, the person that you're sharing your body with is worthy of you, you know, um, don't sell yourself out, don't settle and, and make sure that you are, you know, engaging in good spiritual hygiene um afterwards you know like bryce said do you but protect yourself cleanse yourself make sure that your vessel is clear and and pure and 
don't just go around, you know, giving yourself up just because, you know, you want to satisfy a need or whatever. Um, intimacy and, and sexuality is very, very sacred. It's very sacred. It's a sacred act. It is the, it, it, it is the embodiment of, of love. And when you have high level soulmates or twin flames coming in union and like with my husband and I, our, the beginning of our relationship, the first few years was very toxic. And that is common, unfortunately, and a lot of twin flame unions, especially people who don't know what that's what they're in. Um, but we were able to work through our stuff. You know, my husband had issues with sex addiction, you know, and he was not faithful for quite a while in our the beginning of a relationship. And normally I would never have put up with that stuff, but I just had this um, empathy and sympathy for him when I said, okay, I'm done. I'm not going to allow you to do this to me anymore. And he genuinely needed and wanted help. And I just had this empathy for him because I'm an addict myself and I've been in recovery for a while and I understand what it's like to be in the grips of that mental physical prison. So <clears throat> it was, it was an honor. It's been an honor to watch his growth and change and to be able to immerse myself in the relationship and work on my own stuff and forgive and heal from the things that I've been hurt by him. Um, and, and, you know, progress through all of that in a healthy and beautiful way. It's just like nothing else. Like our relationship has caused this rapid upward spiral in growth for both of us. Um, huge spiritual awakenings, especially in the last three to four years. So that would be my advice. I didn't mean to go off on such a oh. you know, ramble, but <clears throat> No, it's what we we do. We get vulnerable and raw because that's the truth. And that's, um, I, that's one thing I can't like, I, 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 my hat's off to you. I can't handle infidelity. That's like, for me, that would be such a hard, like I, that's a hard boundary for me, um, is infidelity. And so I respect you for being able to like stick in it because that would be, that's hot. Because for me, it's like, you know, as a woman, I've said this before with Magdalene manuscript, like, especially as a woman, you know, in that act of intimacy, you're all jokes aside, like you're super vulnerable as a woman. And I think all women instinctively know that, that that is such a vulnerable place to be and to give yourself over to a man in that intimacy. And then to have that betrayal, I think that that's, I mean, that's, I mean, but then we all, we all sign up for certain things to happen, right. So that we can work through it and, and grow and learn from it as well. And now, Emmy, do you do, can you do cord cutting with your Reiki? Is that something that you can do? Oh yeah. You can, you can do cord cutting with Reiki. You don't need to have Reiki to cord cut. I mean, there's, there's lots of different ways that, and things that you can, can do without the Reiki, but yes, Reiki can clear your aura, cleanse your aura, cut cords. Um, so I'm going to put Emmy's contact information. Cause I know for a lot of people, this stuff is really new, you know, um, I feel very blessed that for the last 15 years of my life, I've been immersed in this like understanding of energetic body, but I understand for a lot of people, this is new. And um, I'm going to put down in description box, a way to contact Emmy for appointments with her. She, you, you can do it. Um, you can do it long distance, right? Yes. Yeah. Energy and, is quantum. I don't need to be in your presence to good. activate the energy. And yeah. I might do a video on, aura cleansing and cord cutting for people um, okay. just because, you know, it, it's valuable information to have. I have a little 20 second routine that I do all the time, especially if I come out of a public place and I feel like there's yucky energy in there or whatever, I'll just cleanse myself real quick in the parking lot. Like I'll open the door, make sure people can't see me doing this weird shit, you know? <laughs> I was in the middle of a major city. I can do whatever I want outside. No one's going to pay attention. I can do whatever. Um, well, I know Stephanie, you have a reading you have to get to soon. Um, but I mean, we, you make that video, send me a link and I'll share it on my page as Thanks. well. Um, mm -hmm. for people. And again, I'm going to put all their contact. I know Stephanie, you're booked until July with your readings, but I'm going to put Emmy, Emmy's contact down in the description box below. And I'm also going to put both of their Venmos down in the description box below guys. If you, if you want to tip them or anything for all their work today, 
Um, their Venmo is going to be down in the description box too. Um, this has been fun, ladies. I hope that our audience watching had fun too. I know I'm going to be disabling the comments because it has been quite rapid fire abuse from the Christian cult. So, um, so I'm going to, am going to be disabling the comments just because I need to set up a boundary for my, somebody said something to me about you're letting them win. No, no, no. Like disabling the comments, I'm setting up a boundary. Um, because when you have to read those comments over and over and over again, it affects you and I'm setting up a boundary. So it is not letting them. It's win. energy. It's projection yeah. of energy. That's, it's actually, that's, it's that's actually not needed. Us, it's actually me winning by mm -hmm. setting up a boundary and moving forward with my information. So the comments will still be disabled for a while until we get over this hump of craziness. So I appreciate you guys for understanding um, we love you all. Um, and I know most people are awesome. Maybe 99% of the people on this channel are just awesome and incredible and amazing. And I'm sorry that the 1% has made it difficult for us to do this, which hello, 1% out there in the macro has made it difficult for us too. So, but anyway, guys, um, we love you all. I hope that was fun for you guys as it was for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, take care of yourselves. Tamara is also going to be sending me a recording for her June as well coming up. So I'm going to be, she's been sick. So as soon as her throat was able, she's going to actually send me a recording for me to put up. So that should be coming up soon too. So, all right, guys, we love you. I'm going to put their links to their channels, their Venmos, everything down below. Please make sure you go subscribe to both of them if you haven't already and spread the love around. It's all about this spiritual timeline, guys. And we want to be on the vibration of love, like those beds at the hotel room that you put the quarter. <laughs> <in the face. laughs> so, all right, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.